All right, so today I believe um, we're just going to do some example problems. To reinforce what it is that we are doing with these feedback voltage amplifiers. And then after we work example problems, we will move on to other types of amplifiers. Okay. So let's start with... This guy. Okay. By the way, I don't know how many of you have looked, but I've uploaded homework assignments for the, uh, the feedback amplifier stuff, as well as um, your exam. On the circuit analysis style questions, I literally tell you where v, uh, VI, VF, and all of that kind of stuff are. So it should make it incredibly easy for you to figure out what the feedback networks are and how to do all of that kind of stuff. So trying to be nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't, wasn't fishing for that, but thank you. I appreciate it. Um, all right. So let's say um, that channel length modulation can be ignored. Let's start with what does this? Oh, so I, I guess I have two questions. Um, let's figure out what our feedback network and all of that kind of stuff <laughs> is going to be. Anybody have any thoughts on that? So I'm going to start with just my terminals. Remember that port one is tied to the input of our system. Port two is what's tied to the output of our system. So I believe pretty firmly that some combination of resistor R1 and R2 is what our feedback network is for this. Um, so tell me how this should be connected. So R1 should connect from one to two. I agree with that wholeheartedly. And then where should R2 go? And also this should be grounded or tied together. And from the input side to ground. Absolutely. Anybody have any beef with our feedback network looking like that? I hope not because it's correct. <laughs> So what is our resistance R11 going to be? So look back in your notes to see how we do this. If I'm remembering correctly, we're looking into port one with port two short circuited. So they're in parallel. R22, we're looking into port two with R1, excuse me, with port one open circuited. They're in series. Our feedback factor, we're looking, uh, applying a test source to port two while leaving port one open circuited. So it's a voltage divider. Mm -hmm. So it's just the, the ratio of the voltage divider. Yeah. Absolutely right. Okay. So hopefully we're all okay with that. So now we need to figure out what our loaded open loop gain circuit is going to look like. So I'm going to place a resistor. Um, 
on my input side, between, between my input side and ground, I'm going to place a resistor between my output side and ground. So to me, I believe that this is going to look something like this. So here's VDD. Here is RD1. V in. Here's the resistance R11. Here is RD2. V out. R22. So, in order for us to analyze this, because it's got two transistors, we're going to break it up into two stages. The left stage is everything to the left of the red dash line, or it's called the input stage that you want to. Um, the output stage is everything to the right of the dash line. So, what does everything to the left of the dashed red line look like? common source amplifier with source to generation, right? So I'm going to call this node right here VX. So VX over VN, because this is a common source amplifier with source to generation and we are neglecting channel length modulation, this to me is going to be negative GM1 RD1 over one plus GM one R one one. By inspection. Um, for what it's worth, I believe I give you that exact relationship on I think it might be a test question. I think it might be the one on test two where I say consider that to be your, uh, I think is the, the test two problem. I know it's got uh, it's a common source amplifier with source degeneration um, and it's got partial degeneration because of that facet. So anyway, should look something incredibly similar to that. All right, so now we're going to figure out V out over VX. So what does that second stage look like? Input supplied at the gate, output taken at the drain. So it is like a common source amplifier. There is no degeneration. So what should our gain be? So it's going to be negative because it's a common source amplifier. GM2. And then we're going to have... RD2 in parallel with R22. So putting these together, our open loop gain A1 is just going to be positive GM1, GM2, RD1 times RD2 in parallel with R22 divided by 1 plus GM1 R11. What is our input resistance? So that would be the resistance seen looking in to here. Infinity, great. What is our output resistance? So that would be the resistance seen looking into here. Exactly right. And now we have everything that we could possibly need to calculate our gain with feedback, our in, uh, input resistance with feedback, and our output resistance with feedback, literally by just applying the equations. James. Because channel length modulation is neglected, if it were included, we would have an R not two in there as well. Yep.
All right, so that one was particularly easy. So let's look at another one. So it's biasing transistor M3's source follower. amplifier. So we've got something akin to a differential pair input stage here, where the output of that differential pair input stage is the input of a source follower stage. And then we have a feedback network, once again, consisting of R1 and R2, um, that's tying the output of our overall system to kind of the input side of our system. So feedback network is going to be literally the exact same thing that has been every other one of these voltage amplifiers. Here's R2. Here's R1. Here's port two. And so from this, R11 is just R1 in parallel with R2. R22 is just R1 in series with R2. And our feedback factor K is just R2 over R1 plus R2. Nothing particularly difficult there. Okay. Using this, we can come up with our open loop amplifier circuit. So something akin to this. So here's BDD. to draw the transistor. This is where R11 is going to go. Round down here. Input signal. I'm going to call this RL in parallel with R22. So R22 is still between the output and ground, but uh, RL was also between the output and ground, so I'm just literally lumping them together. And we can do something fairly similar to what we did a moment ago. We can just break this up into two stages. So we have this differential pair type thing on the left-hand side. And then once again, we have a source follower on the right-hand side. So let's call this VX. Yes. So R22 is always going to be between the output and ground. And R11 is effectively going to be between where we had port one connected and ground. So if we had, so this is the node that we're gonna tie R11 to, and this is the node that we're gonna tie R22 to. And those resistors will always appear between those terminals and ground. All right, so let's start with the easy part of this first. Um, what's the relationship between V out and VX going to be? So actually, let me explicitly stay here. Uh, 
CLM is ignored once again. So we have a source follower amplifier on the right hand side, right? That's the part that I'm looking at. So I believe if I'm not mistaken that this is gonna be GM, sorry, let me label this as M3, M1 and M2. So that'll be GM3 times RL in parallel with R22 over one plus GM3 RL in parallel with R22 by inspecting, because that's how a source follower works. Yeah. How did I know how to draw what? So I'm looking for the part of the system that is effectively tying my output network to my input network. Yes. Um, Another way to kind of think about this is what looks wrong based on what we are familiar with, that is probably the feedback mechanism. Okay. So it's not intuitively obvious how R1, like R1 is definitely connected to the output node, right? It isn't super blatantly obvious how R1 is connected to the input node, unless we think about this thing as a differential pair amplifier, which is exactly what's going on on the left-hand side, right? We have something that looks akin to a differential pair. And so the fact that there is going to be some voltage there, because it's not tied to ground or anything like that, is going to cause a change in our differential voltage, which is going to cause a change in this, uh, the voltage present at this output node. So that's why I'm saying that looks like it being tied to the end. Because I know for the in and then whatever voltage I see, so the gate source voltage for transistor M2, um, the difference between those two things is a differential input voltage to my differential pair. Does that make any sense? Okay. Okay, so I think we're all okay with our basic source follower relationship, GM um, times whatever the resistance is connected to the source over one plus GM times whatever the resistance is connected to the source. For the other stage, um, this is where things get a little gross. So, Do we have a symmetrical network? No, not even close this time because we have an RD on one side and a short circuit on the other side. So this is a pretty large imbalance. So we are not gonna be able to exploit the symmetry of our system. So instead we're going to have to look at a small signal mob, right? So this is us finding Vx over Vn, okay? So I believe our small signal model should look something like this. So here's Vn. Here's our gate source voltage VGS1. Here's GM1 VGS1. Um, the drain of my transistor M1 is at ground, or is at AC ground, uh, so that's why I'm grounding that out. With channel length modulation neglected, R0 is going to look like an open circuit. Over here on the other side of things, so now we're figuring out what's going on with transistor M2. So this is going to be VG, uh, excuse me, VGS, goodness gracious, I'm screwing this up, GM2 VGS2. Here's our resistance RD. 
This is our voltage Vx. And here is our resistance R11. Here's VGS2. And I'm going to call this voltage here at my source just Vs because we can't assume it to be zero. All right. So now we've got to analyze this thing and figure out what the hell the relationship between Vx and Vn is. So let's start with some low-hanging fruit. Um, what is VGS1? Vn minus Vs. I agree with that wholeheartedly. What about VGS2? Negative Vs. Okay. So if we apply Kirchhoff's current law at our source node, Um, we have a current of GM1 VGS1 flowing in, so that's going to look like GM1 times VN minus VS. Uh, and we have a current of GM2 times VGS2 flowing in, so that's going to be GM2 times negative VS is equal to zero. So... Rearranging things a little bit, we would have GM1 times VN is equal to GM1 plus GM2 times VS. And from this, we could say that VS is VN times GM1 over GM1 plus GM2. Everybody okay-ish with that? All right. So, how are we going to solve for Vx? could, but um, I think Ohm's law will get us there. So I think that Vx is just the voltage drop across that resistor Rd. So let's do this over here on the right-hand side, right? So from Ohm's law, Vx is just going to be negative GM2, VGS2, RD. Seem reasonable? Which would be the same as positive GM2, VS times RD. Because we know that VGS2 is negative VS. Now we will substitute things in. So we're going to get GM1, GM2, RD, divided by GM1 plus GM2 times VN. And from this, VX over VN is GM1, GM2 over GM1 plus GM2 times RD. Um, I'm trying to think if there's a way that I can simplify that. So GM1 times GM2 over GM1 plus GM2 is what would happen if we had two um, conductances in series. Because conductances in series combine like resistors in parallel. Um, that being said, if I just wrote GM1 plus GM2, you would think I'm adding them together and not saying that they're in series. So I'm probably just going to leave it like that. 
there's not really a shorthand notation that we could do. So putting things together, A1 is just going to be the product of these two things. So that would be GM1, GM2, RD over GM1 plus GM2, all of that multiplied by GM3 times RL in parallel with R22 over 1 plus GM3 RL in parallel with R22. Our input resistance would be what? Infinity. Our output resistance would be what? So RL in parallel with R22, but I feel like we're going to see something looking up into the source of M3. 1 over GM3. Absolutely right. And from here, we have everything that we would need to calculate our gain with feedback, our input resistance with feedback, and our output resistance with feedback. So let's do one more. And I'm going to let you guys tell me what to do. So this is either going to be great or change. For what it's worth, uh, one of the reasons why I'm specifically going to have you guys tell me what to do on this one is because it is so wildly similar to one of the test questions. All right. So here is our circuit of interest. There's a name for this thing. Circuit of interest. Yeah. Circuit of interest. But let's look at what we have here. We have a resistor R1 tying our output node to our inverting input node. And we have a resistor R2 between our inverting input node and ground. This is literally a transistor level representation of a non-inverting amplifier that we did in circuits one. So now, Tell me how it works in the context of this class. <laughs> All right. So what do you think our feedback network is here? Let's do this the same way that we've done everything else. So literally the same as it has been every other time. Um, so we're going to have R1 between our ports and R2 shunted across port 1. So what is R1 what? R1 and R2 in parallel. What is R22? M in series. What is K? Okay. Literally the exact same thing it has been every other time. Okay. So now we need to draw our open loop gain circuit. 
So I'm going to have a resistance R11 between my inverting input node and ground. And then my resistance R22 is going to show up between the output node and the ground. So what is the gain of my open loop? It should, for the most part, just be you guys working back in your notes and spitting stuff like that. Again, you shouldn't have to literally analyze this at all. We've already done that part of things. This is just recognizing, oh, I've seen that circuit before. It behaves in this way. Uh, my notes I have. Here. We have to have channel link modulation for this. Everything is transistors. <laughs> So what you have is correct. GM2, R02 in parallel with R04, but what impact will our loading resistors have on that north? Which one is in parallel? R22 is in parallel. Absolutely correct. What's our input resistance going to be? Nope. Infinity. Red herring there. R sig will be in series with an open circuit. So it's just going to be an open circuit. What's our output resistance? R22 in parallel with what? R04. Ooh, there we go. So if you look at one of your problems, I believe it's on your exam, it is a combination of this problem and the last problem that you like. Um, so I give you a single stage op amp circuit um, that is cascaded, not cascaded, cascaded into a source follower state uh, as an output buffer. And I ask you to do this. So it would be very Yes, Anna. So, um, uh, if you go back into your notes for the common, you know, uh, the, I think we call this a differential pair um, with an active load or something like that. When we calculated our output resistance, like there is absolutely going to be some resistance. Let's look at it real quick and see if we can't sort things out, okay? So I think at this point, we all probably agree that R22 is gonna be in parallel with something because we see that resistance between the output node and ground. So let's sort the other stuff out. Um, really just to kill some time. So I'm gonna draw my small signal model for this thing. So we would have something akin to this, um, let's start with transistor M1. So my input signal would be grounded. Here's R sig plus minus 
BGS1. PM1, VGS1 in parallel with R01. My source, uh, we're going to treat it as ground because the circuit is almost symmetrical. So that's as about as good as we're going to get here. Over on this side of things, we're going to have R02. Here will be GM2, BGS2. Tie those together. Here we are going to have R11. Like so. So that's transistors M1 and M2. So now let's sort out M3 and M4. So this will be GM3 VSG3 in parallel with R03. Um, let's see, my source is at ground. My drain of transistor M3 is tied to the drain of transistor M1, so we'll connect those together here. Plus minus the SG three. I'll sort that bit out in a second. Move backwards. R not four. VM four VSG four. Here is VSG four. This is, um, let's see, my output node. So that's where I'm going to apply my test source. Here's I test, B test. My drains are tied together. And These sources are tied together for what it's worth. And then I also have my gate of M3 tied to the drain of M3, like so. My small signal model look okay? Anybody see any beef? Lucas, what's up? No, it should, uh, you're correct. It should be on the drain of M4. It should not be on the gate. Um, the gate there, I might have drawn this in a way that makes it harder. Let me think about this really quickly and how to do this. So the gates of my two transistors are tied together. So I think it might be easier 
to redraw this bit up here and draw those transistors backwards. Or what I would consider to be backwards. Um, so put the gate on the right hand side. So let's put R not three here. GM3, VSG3 here. Um, GM4, VSG4 here. R not 4 here. Minus plus VSG4, minus plus VSG3. And then there's my test source. Does that look better? Okay. All right, so let's sort some things out here. So what's VGS1? Yep. No, I'm just not including it because I know that whatever I get from this is gonna be in parallel with that. So that's just increasing complexity that I, don't want to do. Yeah, I'm neglecting it here because whatever I see between this node and ground will be in parallel with R22 because it's between the same node and ground. All right, so VGS1, what's it going to be? Zero, right? Um, the positive polarity terminal is at ground because no current can flow through R SIG. Uh, because it's open circuited, the negative polarity terminal is at ground. So VGS1 is zero, which means this bit right here is an open circuit. What's VGS2? Same thing, which means this bit right here is an open circuit. All right, so... Um, So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put, let's see. So I have a resistance of R01 that is between this node right here and ground. So I could just as easily say that this is R01 in parallel with R03 and R02 is between this node and ground. So I could put and R not two up here. Now, that is going to, let's see, that's going to take that guy away and take that guy away. I don't want to accidentally count it twice. <laughs> All of this together, and I'm not even sure if this is going to help, uh, is going to look like R01 in parallel with R03 in parallel with 1 over GM3 uh, because the voltage drop across that current source and the current flowing through the current source are linearly related to each other. How does that help me figure out what VGS4 is? So that is a pretty reasonable thing there. So so VSG would be the voltage drop across R1 or R01 in parallel with R03 in parallel with 1 over GM3. 
But over there, that's completely isolated by itself. There's no excitation source. So I think it is pretty fair to say that VSG3 is zero, which means in turn, VSG4 is also zero. So it looks like it actually should be R0 four in parallel with R0 two. I just have it drawn fiddly in my notes. There, okay. Boom, fixed. All right. That makes sense. Okay. Sorry. Um, we only have 15 minutes left. I don't even think that's enough time to get through our next um, feedback amplifier, even the practical case. So let's call it a day for here. And we'll kick off with either transconductance or trans resistance amplifiers on Friday, uh, whichever I feel like doing. Yeah. Yes. What do you think about that? Realistically, um, I don't think we'll have to work as many example problems to kind of sort things out going from here because the process is fairly similar. Um, so as far as lecture material goes, um, for the most part, we are going to be doing a very similar thing to what we did for feedback voltage amplifiers, uh, except that calculating R11 and R22 and K will be slightly different depending on our configurations. So... Typically speaking, I can do two of them in a day. So I can do like current amplifier and transconductance amplifier in a day, and then it would take one day for the other one. And so I think we should be done with lectures by Monday at the absolute 